God, there's no reason for him to pursue you. He's not going to overtake you with his mercy and his goodness and, and forgiveness and redemption without your heart being toward him. And so, as the morning to give you a fresh start, if you will run after God, if you will return to God, if you're going to pursue the knowledge or the experience of His faithfulness, you will find out that while you've been looking for Him, He has been all that time looking for you. The song we sing from time to there, time to time, He was there all the time, waiting patiently in line. And so, what we're saying is that every morning, so He will come like the rain, the latter and the former rain to the earth, and the, as what He does for the earth... <laughs> Rain, rain conditions the soil. Is that right? It softens the soil so that when you put a seed into it, it goes deep into the ground. And, and it's, it, it, the, the, the moisture in the soil is able to in, embrace that seed. It's able to nourish that seed. It's able to encompass that seed and give that seed that, that rain, that water that it needs. If it's in parched ground, that seed's going to sit there. Nothing is going to happen. Until water hits it. Nothing's going to happen to that seed until water hits it. It's going to come like rain. Because how many know that when you run from God, your spirit and soul is parched? Amen. You're dry in your spirit. That's as dry as could be. But God says, if you'll come to more me, I'll turn the showers on for you. Amen. It'll only, not only refresh in your spirit, give you like a, uh, the Irish spring morning. <laughs> or remember the days when the dial soap used to have actual perfume in it or some kind of a fragrance and now nothing it smells like floor soap you know there's nothing in it anymore used to be done I remember the guy after he sh showered with gossip I used aren't, aren't you glad you used dial don't you wish everybody did you remember that guy he said, I used dial aren't you glad you used them? don't you wish everybody did well, there was a time I wished everybody used dial because it makes your stink good. You know, it's good. It's great. Now there's no fragrance to it whatsoever. So keep your dial. Don't come back on the television and break the TV. But anyway, it's besides the point. Now, the Lord says, I'm going to make your life a fragrance because the morning smell good. Can you say amen? amen? So when you get renewed in the spirit, then you smell good because it's fresh. You are now fresh like the morning. I think that's pretty exciting. But you have to return to the Lord. The Lord is the one who provides these things. He will come to us like the rain, let rain. Let us pursue the Lord. You have to hunger after the things of God. Jesus said, Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And so it's not a scientific acquaintance in our experience, meaning God. But it is the, the, the sentiment of justice and trust and, and truthfulness and love and mercy which are the inspiration for the soul for all of us here. Now, let me, let me go on to give you a, a couple of insights where uh, Paul and John are concerned. Now, Brother Gary, I want to give you a couple of scriptures. And let me give you a couple of scriptures that Paul talked about, I know. If I, if I was to ask you certain questions, I won't. I'm, I pray that you'd be able to say, well, this thing I know, there's one thing I know. You've heard people say, well, there's one thing I know. This I know. They don't have a clue. But because they believe from the conviction that they do know, they're very adamant about it. I mean, how many has ever met people like that? Maybe it's happened to you that they say, well, man, I know better than I know. Well, did you know about this? No, I didn't know about that. But then you didn't know what you thought you knew. That's right, I guess that's right. Well, don't say you know unless you know. What am I saying? It's important for you to get to that point of spiritual conviction in your heart that you know, that you know, that you know, that nothing this side of eternity will change your mind about. Amen. Amen. There's a difference between being convicted in your heart and being merely stubborn. <clears throat> stubborn people are just dumb. Amen. They want their own way, their own thinking. That stubbornness, that is no good. That will destroy any relationship. That's, throw that out. But I'm not talking about stubbornness. I'm talking about the conviction of the soul that this 
thing I know about my God. Let me tell you about my God. How many know that the Samaritan woman at the well, when she started to go down to the town, she knew what she was talking about. I met the man. Somebody say, I met the man. I met the man. Is it the same man she met? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. You're sure? Absolutely. You're absolutely sure that it's the same man that she met at Jacob's well in Samaria. You're sure about that? Well, you better be. It's the same Jesus. The Bible says so. And so there are things you need to know. So now watch. Let me give you some scriptures. You can write these down if you want to. Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. And I think this is very important. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. If you'll look this up. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. For this reason, when I could no longer endure it, I said to know your faith. Paul didn't like it guesswork. Paul didn't like assumptions. Paul lived in the real world, not in a fantasy world. No assumptions in his world. He had to know. And he's writing to the Thessalonians because they had heard about his dilemma, the physical situation, the imprisonments, the hunger, the, the nakedness in terms of peril and storms and everything else. He's, he thought and he felt in his heart that because of everything that he had gone through that these Thessalonian Christians would have been weakened in their faith because of all the things that Paul had to go through. He said, for this reason I can no longer endure. I sent to know your faith lest by some means the tempter had tempted you and our labor might have been in vain. They had to know about your faith. What's important to your pastors here at Calvary Community Church we have to feel convicted about your faith. We as your pastors need to know that you're on solid ground. Yes. Are you getting this tonight? That you're not going to fall over like a, like, like a lead balloon for every next storm that comes around in your life. Yeah, that like the trenches and the war, they, it gets hard sometimes. But you're going to come out of that trench. You're going to come out victorious. So what do we say tonight, right? But now that Timothy has come to us from you and brought us the good news of your faith and love and that you always have good remembrance of us, greatly desire that we also desire to see you. What is Paul saying? I was reassured, I was comforted when I found out, when I knew about your faith. Right now, you need to put your faith in a deposit box. A safety deposit box for it to be safe. How many know that all the banks have safety deposit bank? The boxes, nobody can get to them. Only you have the key. Right now, your faith and your life, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, chapter 2 and 3, verse 1, 2 and 3, said, seek the things that are above because your life is hidden in Christ Jesus. Jesus. So your faith is in the safety deposit box in the name of Jesus. It is in Christ Jesus. Nobody can take you out of Jesus. Nobody can take your faith out of Jesus. And the lock has been, the key has turned the lock. It is sealed onto the day of redemption. I want you to make sure that your faith is safe in Jesus tonight. I want you to know that you know that you know that you know. That you're saved, that you're walking with God, that He hears your prayers, that you love the brethren, that you love Calvary Community Church, that you love your pastors, that you love your enemies. Yep. You want to make sure where your faith is. He brought us good news, and we were comforted by that. So it's important to know. Know where you stand with your conviction. Know where you stand in your walk with God. I'm, I'm, my flaps are down. 2 <laughs> Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. If I could preach a sermon on each one of these. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. The Apostle Paul again encourages Timothy. Very important here. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless I am not ashamed. For what? Everybody read to get from that for I, okay? For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Paul said, I don't care what I have to suffer. See, he knew where his faith was. It was in a safety deposit box. He knew. 
I'm not going to worry about that. I don't care what hits me. I don't care what comes my way. My faith is secure, for I know who I have believed. And I'm persuaded. Did you see the persuasion? You see the conviction of the heart? Because when you know that you know, you get full persuasion, full conviction. Nothing's going to change your mind. See, it's all part of the spirit of knowledge that comes with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will never leave you hanging. He will always bear witness with your heart that you're the child of God. That he's able to keep that which I've come on again. In other words, Paul says, I know that God's going to keep Paul because I've committed Paul unto God against the judgment day. And the last one for Paul is Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. How many remember hearing this? We know that all things work together for good to them that know the Lord. We write that off so quickly. And in Romans chapter 8 verse 28, we know that all things we what and we what? Work together. No, no, no. But we what? We what? No, no. Are you sure? No. Are you sure about that? Now, if you know that, that the next storm that you're in, you won't worry about the storm. Amen. Either you know or you don't know. Are you getting this? All right. Paul said, We know. We know. And sometimes when the storm hits, all of a sudden our faith is on shaky ground. All of a sudden we're not sure where we are. Hold on. Wait a minute. That's not the plan of God. When you know that you know, it's important to pursue the knowledge of God. Pursue His faithfulness. Pursue the experience of knowledge to tell you that He is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted above what you're able to bear, but with every temptation make your escape. Either you know that or you don't. But how many times does God have to bail us out until we get to that point where we know that we know? How many times? How many times does He have to heal? How many times does He have to deliver us? How many times does He have to miraculously intervene? How many times before we rest our faith in the lockbox in Jesus Christ? How many times? I would say that we have been blessed amply. Yes. That we should never question again, no matter what comes our way. Never. All things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are called to do you love God? Amen. Then what's going to happen to you? Come on, according to this. If you love God, what's going to happen? Yeah, and you're going to be all right. Everybody say, I'm all right. All right. Yeah, I'm all right. You tell your neighbor, I'm all right. Smile at him. What am out Tell somebody like you mean it. I'm all right. I'm all right. Tell them, tell the other person, I'm going to be all right. Yeah, I'm going to be all right. You better believe it. I'm all right and I'm going to be all right. And that's not a snotty attitude. That's just telling you that because I love God more than life itself, nothing's going to happen to me unless God permitted it. And if He permitted it to happen, then God's going to see me through. Because all things work together for good. To those who are calling, I know you're called. Everybody say, I'm called. I'm called. So these are the no I knows of Paul. Let me give you a few of them from John. We're in 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 and 5. 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. Now by this we... There it is again. We what? By this we know that we know it. Look at everybody. No, no, no. I know we know by this. We know, we know, we know. It doesn't sound to me like the disciples question anything. Looks to me that they knew Jesus. Amen. It appears to me that they had a relationship with the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. So he says, by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. Let me give the other one. Verse 5. Same chapter. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in Him. Somebody shout praise the, praise the Lord. Chapter 3, same book, Brother Gary. Same book. Chapter 3, verse 2. Chapter 3, verse 2. First John, chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the children of God, and it has not yet appeared or been revealed what we shall be. But we know. What? 
I don't know exactly what my body is going to look like. I'm not sure what the church human beings are going to look like when he when we're all in heaven. I'm not sure. I don't need to know. I'm comforted to know that I'm going to be there. And for me, that's all I need to know. There's one thing I don't know. I don't know. I, I, there's a lot of things I know. But a lot of things I don't know. In Deuteronomy, it tells us that the things that are secret belong to God. Amen. And, but the things that are revealed to us are revealed to us that we may live by them. Okay? So there are things about heaven I can only imagine. All I know is Jesus is going to be there. Amen. Right? And this is what I know about when Jesus comes. It has not yet been revealed, we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, or when he comes, we shall be like him. Do you know that you'll look like him when you get there? How many would like to look like Jesus? Hallelujah. When you get there, you're going to look like him. For we shall see him as he is. Remember that mirror I showed you here? After the casket I showed you the men, we are changed into the likeness and the image of the Son of God. Right now we're in that process. But when we see Him, we'll be completely transferred and transformed into Him. Alright? For we shall see Him as He is. That's 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Chapter 3, verse 14, the same book. Real quick. Chapter 3, verse 14. Watch this. We know that we have. Let's try that again. We know that we have passed from death. How many know that you're saved? Amen. One way you will know that you're truly a child of God, that you're truly saved, you pass from death to life because you love believers. Amen. If you don't like believers, you don't know Jesus yet. Because to love a believer is to love Jesus. Amen. To despise a believer is to despise him. You can't separate the two. So he says, he who does not love his brother abides in what? Death. So he who doesn't love his neighbor abides in death. Who wants to be there? Okay? We don't have to do 15. Now, let's look at chapter 4 now, same book. Chapter 4. Verse 6 to 8. These are all different I know, we know. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. No, what, what? No, chapter, no, chapter 4, verse 6. Chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. Chapter 4, verse 6 to 8, yeah. All right. We are of God. Can you say amen? Amen. How many know that for sure? All right, we are of God. He who knows God hears us. And he who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know. No. The spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone who loves is born of God and all full of knows and knows God. Verse 8. He who does not love his, the lot love does not know God. He who does not love does not know God. No, 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 no. He who does not love does not know God. Know God for God is love. Look at verse 13, same chapter. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. Chapter 5, verse 13. Let's do it quickly so I can cut down. Chapter 5, verse 13. These are all John's notes. These things I have I written to you who believe in the name of the, Lord, the Son of God that you may... No. that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Look at verse 15. I'm sorry, yeah, chapter 5, verse 15. And if we know 
that He hears us. Whatever we ask, we know. Golly, that John knew something. <laughs> I can go on all day with chapter 1, 2, 3, and 5, up to 5 in 1 John all day long. Just with what John knew. What is he trying to tell us? You know, knew. You need to know. You need to know something. As much as I'm, he's saying, I'm trying to transmit to you knowledge of the Lord that what I know of Jesus, you can know the same thing. To say, if we know that he hears us, that whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. We know. How many glad that you know that God hears your prayer? Amen. If we didn't know that by conviction, then we wouldn't bother. We wouldn't bother praying, would we? Look at verse eighteen. Verse eighteen. Verse eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. We know that whoever is born of God. We what? We know that whoever is born of God does not. not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. How many want to be free from Satan's yes. grip? Then quit sinning! Every time you sin opens the door. When you sin you're opening the, you're cracking the door open to make room for don't do that man. God knows how to spank us when we're disobedient. Amen. In verse 19, we know. Lord, we have one pupil. We <laughs> know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. So we know who we are, and we know the world, and we know the distinction between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. We know who belongs to God, and we know who doesn't belong to God. How many feel you know a little bit more tonight than you did? Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Do you know? How many feel you know? You know now? <laughs> okay. So we have the spirit of everybody say spirit of knowledge. Spirit of knowledge. This is what it's all about. I know our time is just about up, right? And so let's have a word of prayer and ask the Lord to bless our hearts together. Not because we have intellectual understanding about things, but by reason of use, by reason of use, that's the ticket. Father, we want to put to use the knowledge that we have. And I pray that these scriptures that were given tonight will lay heavy in our hearts. And the next time, Lord, that we are challenged by a circumstance in life, that we'll look this scripture up. And I know that there's something in those scriptures that we've shared, shared here tonight will fit that particular need at that time with a conviction of knowledge by the spirit of knowledge that is in us is the spirit of God that is in us, the spirit of knowledge that searches the deep things of God. God, we pray for our hearts now to receive that. Let the rain, the former and the latter rain. God, let it rain in our soul by the Holy Spirit so that this word can germinate, Lord, and bring forth much fruit and knowledge to be able to be teachers of the word, teaching others, showing them by model example what Christian and Christianity and what Christ is all about. Father, bless these words and we seal these words in this prayer by the name of Christ and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen, amen and Amen. Give the Lord another good clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.